Welcome everybody to the April 7th meeting of the Middleborough Board of Selectmen. Would you please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to thank the 270 people that showed up at the polls this weekend to, ele to vote to elect the people that are going to control your town finances for the next year. Uh, the other 13,000 don't complain. You made your choice. I would like to welcome the two, welcome Alan Frawley back for his second term. Uh, board of Selectmen. I would like to welcome uh, Diane Stewart to the group. Uh, congratulations on your win. Uh, glad to have you on board. You have both been sworn in? Yep. Yes. yes. I saw it, but we have to do that for the record. <laughs> At this point in time, <clears throat> uh, nominations are now in order for the position of Chairman of the Middleborough Board of Selectmen. I would like to nominate Alan Frawley as Chairman. We have a nomination for Alan Frawley as Chairman. Are there any other nominations for Chairman? Are there any other nominations for Chairman? Having to do that twice because of Robert's Rules of Order, etc. The nominations are now closed. I would entertain a vote. For Mr. Alan Farley for Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, laugh at me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I would like to move back down to the corner. This would give us an even flow of our boy, girl, boy, girl, and inclusive <laughs> society that we have today. Rose Sounds thorn, good to me. Rose Thorny. Rose Thorny, Rose Thorny. Diane, would you like to move over next to where Alan's at? I would be happy to. Mr. Chairman, uh, could I get a photo? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Including the new one, Sure. Should we sit? Sam, <coughs> what do you want us? Yeah, yeah the photographer, tell us what to do. Some sit, um, some stand. Yeah, All right, um, I guess we'll uh, open nominations for uh, vice chair. I would nominate Leilani Delphi. Uh, taking nominations for vice chair. All right, having said that twice, following Mr. McCann's lead, Nominations are now closed. Uh, we'll take a vote for Leilani Dalfi as the Vice Chair of the Board of Selectmen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Congratulations, Ms. <laughs> <Ms>. Dalfi. <laughs> oh, you were just waiting for that, weren't you? <laughs> You're off. All right. <laughs> All right, so moving forward, uh, does any member of the board have anything under unanticipated? No, sir. Any member of the audience have anything under unanticipated? All right, 
Um, announcements and recognitions. Any member of the board have anything under unanticipated? Uh, Mis yeah. Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to announce, you all know it's coming up this weekend, the Herring Festival. Uh, we are busting at the seams, no more rooms. So if you really want to be part, you may call and we'll put you on the list for next year as a vendor or a food vendor or a participant. Um, but do come down and see us. Lots of, lots of programs going on all weekend at Oliver Mill and then back in town. And the, it's www.facebook.com slash Herring Friends for more information. Mr. Chair. Mr. Milton. I'd just like to recognize and thank all the individuals who put their names out and ran for public office this time around. Um, even though it was uncontested, it still you know, is important that people get out there and run for these positions and do the town's work. And I want to thank all those people who were able to do that. Very good. Um, I'd like to echo Mr. Milton's comments. It's, uh, I think, like nine. The town's run by volunteers. If we don't have the volunteers to run for the run the town, um, it's going to go south pretty quick. So I appreciate everybody who does take the time out and volunteer and do do the important work that uh, that goes on behind the scenes. It's uh, it really is a sacrifice. It really is a commitment to the town. Uh, as a someone who's raising a family in this town, I can't thank you enough. So thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chair, excuse me, if I could just add to that, there is still a vacancy on the Finance Committee, I believe? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, if anyone wants to volunteer for anything in town, tell us what you're interested in and we'll find a spot for you. There's always space. So if anyone has any interest whatsoever, I don't care what you're, if you just want to help, that's good enough reason. Get in touch with the Board of Selectmen or Charlie and uh, we'll find a spot for you. I promise. So <coughs> uh, that's it. Anyone else on the board? Under announcements and recognitions? Um, and the herring are here, just in case anybody doesn't know that. There's uh, a couple thousand of them down at Oliver Mill, a couple thousand more of them over at uh, the Wayham Street Fish Ladder, and uh, it's a great, great thing to see. They should be here for a couple weeks, so uh, we'll hear more about that later. But um, anyone from the audience have anything under announcements and recognitions? Good evening, uh, Robert Burke, 2505 Fox Run, Middleborough, Massachusetts, the adjutant of Post 64 of the American Legion, named after Simeon L. Nickerson. Uh, I'm here to announce that the Oak Point Veterans Association and the American Legion is holding a fundraiser Wednesday evening, it's two nights away from now, in order to support, raise money for Operation Comfort Warriors. I've given you all a brochure I have brochures up here if anyone in the audience would like one. Operation Comfort Warriors is a program that's run by the American Legion. Every dollar that's donated to Operation Comfort, Comfort Warriors goes to veterans. All the administration charges of administering this is taken up by the American Legion. They pay all the administration card charges. What Operation Comfort Warriors is, is we go in to a hospital or a VA facility. We go in and we talk to the admin people. We talk to the uh, physical therapy people. And we talk to the activities people asking what they may need. Any of you that have been through any type of prolonged stay in therapy realize the long hours of sitting around and doing nothing. You get three squares a day and you probably have 45 minutes to an hour of therapy. The rest of the day is up to you. Operation Comfort Warriors provides distractions. Everything from playing cards to iPads to archery sets, basketballs, ba baseballs, gloves, whatever this organization needs. They'll get a list from those people and within two to three weeks, they'll show up with those items. We'll be showing a v uh, DVD that uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday evening of five different areas that they went into and supplied things for. It's a very worthwhile organization. We need to support our veterans. And I, I, I totally agree with you, uh, uh, Mr. Frawley, on volunteerism. I'd love to do more for the town, but if I volunteer for one more thing, I'll have to move away. My wife will kill me. Uh, but I, I'm familiar uh, with that feeling. I, I, I <laughs> 
we, we should join a club. We'll form a club. That's what we'll do. But this is this is a great organization. The American Legion is the largest uh, organization of military uh, veterans that are in the country, and we try to do whatever we can for not only the veterans coming back, but for the community. Uh, our post visits, um, all the nursing homes. Every every single month we go in. Um, we have we, we've had a banner year this year for student trooper. We're lucky if we get two or three people to go to Student Trooper. We're sending seven people to Student Trooper this year. Boys State, we're sending two, and Girls State, we're sending two. It's a bumper year, so you're gonna be hearing a lot more from us next year because we need funding to, to take care of our youth. These, we, we have at the high school, I don't know, Brian, is Brian here? I talked to one young lady uh, that wants to go to West Point and another young lady that wants to go to the Coast Guard Academy and a young man that wants to go to West Point. So we have some pretty good students uh, coming up. Our oratorical was very successful, contest was very successful this year. Uh, Mary Cole uh, won the post, she won the zone, and then she also uh, uh, won the district. So she did very, very well. Uh, she came in fourth place in the state. So we're, we're growing, we're doing really good things. But this is our effort this week to take care of our veterans through Operation Comfort Warriors. I'll be glad to address any questions if anyone has them. Well, yes. I have a couple. Um, where is it? It's going, oh, good questions. <laughs> it's gonna be at uh, the Oak Point Ballroom. Uh, Monkeys will be having a cash bar. Uh, there'll be a cocktail hour between five and six, which will be serving cheese and crackers. Boston Tavern will, will then be serving a meatloaf dinner, consisting obviously of meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Um, uh, baked macaroni and cheese. They have a buffalo baked macaroni and cheese that we get a side order every time we go. It's really good. And then there'll be a dessert table, coffee. Um, the young ladies from the Burtwood School will be there. They will be hostess, hosting the event. Um, uh, we'll be having them sing the national anthem for us. Uh, we're in trying to get Red Skelton to show up to uh, say the uh, Pledge of Allegiance for us. Uh, that's a little bit technical issue there, but I think we can, uh, we can get by that. Uh, and then uh, Laura James will be there to supply, uh, to supply entertainment for about an hour and a half. And then if there's any time left, we'll have some dancing. But we have lots of gifts. Everyone in attendance will get a goodie bag. A lot of the, the different um, companies around town have uh, supplied little trinkets to put in there. Uh, it's going to be a good time. It, this is the first annual of many annuals, uh, and we're just gonna keep on going. What's Anything the else? cost? The cost, oh, you had to ask that, huh? $25 a person. Ah. Mr. Chairman, Bob. Yes. If somebody wished to contribute to this, but they didn't, weren't able to get to there Wednesday night, how would they go about contributing cash, uh, cash contribution? I assume you will take we, we, we've, we've already accepted in excess of $2,000 of contributions. Uh, so yes, we will accept contributions. Just mail it to post. Uh, make, uh, you can send it to me personally. Make it out to me, of course, if you're going to do that. Uh, or you can send it to the American Legion Post 64, Post Office Box 135. In Middleborough. In Middleborough. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Knowlton. Uh, just following up on what uh, Selectman McKinnon was saying, there's not a separate website for Operation Comfort Warrior, so you just, if you want to donate online, you can do it online as well? Uh, no, there is no online donations for this, this event. Um, there is a website, you go to the National American Legion website, and then you can go from there, you can go to the Operation Comfort Warriors okay, but you, website from there. And there is, there is a section of the Legion website that is details the information about Operation Comfort. Absolutely. Okay. And right. in there it has, it has uh, several stories, uh, uh, lots of photographs, uh, and, some, uh, and some movies of different uh, events that they've held. Good. So. Looking forward to it. Good. Glad to see. Anything else? Thank you all. Thank you Thank very you. much. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, 
Come on up, Mr. Gillis. Good evening, and congratulations to both of you for being reelected. Uh, Richard Gillis, 45 Bond Street, and a couple of school department announcements. On Thursday, April 17th, the school department will be presenting their uh, public uh, budget presentation. And on Wednesday night, um, we also are sponsoring at the Nichols Middle School beginning at 7 o'clock. This is for uh, parents and adults in the community, a presentation on uh, sexting. Um, it's an issue in schools all over, um, everywhere. Um, and, and it's something that perhaps if people are available, they may want to go to. Thank you. Seven o'clock. No cost. Thank you, Mr. Gillis. Anyone else? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes for uh, 331 14. So, so moved. Move. The Second. executives. Oh, all right. One at a time. I'm sorry. You brought the new guy. Uh, we have a motion. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. One abstention. All right. Um, for the same date, the executive session minutes. So moved. Second. <coughs> have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. One abstention. All right. Anybody opposed? No opposed. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to authorize the chairman or his designee to sign the warrants for week ending uh, 4 5 14. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right. New business. Vote the. Uh, Board of Selectmen representative to the Capital Planning Committee. Um, I've been serving on the Capital Planning Committee for the last, I think, three years. Uh, if it pleases the board, I'd like to continue that role. Uh, there is some historical knowledge that I think is valuable to so that move. Committee. Thank Second. you. Second. Any other discussion? All right. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Beautiful. All right. Who would like to be the Board of Selectmen Rep to the Police Station Building Committee? Mr. Chair. Ms. Delphi. To keep continuity, I would be glad to remain in that capacity. So move. Second. Oh, I can't do that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got to reshuffle here. All right. We have a motion and a, uh, and a second. Yes. All, um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Unanimous? Beautiful. All right, the Citizens Environmental Health Impact Committee. Now, there's, uh, as far as this goes, there's uh, one member from the Board of Selectmen and one member from the Board of Health. Uh, Charlie, is there any way we can modify that? I don't know if it's necessary for two members of the board to. Uh, um, I have to go back and look at it, but I will. All right. So, why don't, why don't you want to pass over this and then we'll look we'll at it? All right. So, we'll hold on that. Um, who would like to be the selectman representative to the MBTA advisory board? I nominate Al Rolo. I think he's, <laughs> I think he's still serving in that capacity. We haven't taken him out, so <laughs> let him just keep going. He's doing a great job. He's still got the train, so. <laughs> would anyone like to be the uh, Next meeting is tomorrow. The next meeting is tomorrow. Plenty of time. It would be nice if we had someone even just say they would like to do it. I'm not saying they have to do it. It would be nice if they said they did it because... Mr. Chairman, I'll volunteer not to do it. Okay. <laughs> Second. <laughs> I'm not. No, I'll volunteer to do oh, okay. it. Okay. I'm sorry. I yeah. misinterpreted my words. <laughs> That's a Freudian slip. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was definitely that. Yeah. All right. We have a motion. Is that a second? Well, it was a motion. Second. Whatever you needed. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Who would like to be the representative on the Plymouth County Advisory Board? Mr. Mr. Oops. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I did that for four years before uh, 
turning it over to Ben last year. Uh, I would, having some familiarity with them, I would just soon continue that if, if it's the pleasure of the board. Anyone else? Fine. I'd entertain a motion to that respect. So moved. Second. Good. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, vote the Board of Selectmen representative to usurp it, effective May 22nd to May 31st. Um, I've been doing that last, I did that last year. I'd continue if no one else wants to do it. So if someone else does want to do it. So moved. Second. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that was unanimous. Uh, vote Board of, <coughs> Board of Selectmen, delegate to JTPG and the alternate to JTPG. And what exactly is JTPG? Joint Transportation Planning Group. So I've been your delegate and Ruth has been your alternate. And that's through Serpent? That's, yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Serpid um, host that. I, I make a motion that Charlie Cristello be the uh, delegate and Ruth be the alternate. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. All right. Vote for uh, We're going to hold off on this one as well because. It's the same thing as the other one. Um, I would entertain a, well, we'll take a vote to, yeah, I'll entertain a motion to reappoint Mr. Bruce G. Atwood and Edward Braun as members of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending 6-30-19. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Moulton. Um, in the whole, uh, spirit of getting people to uh, volunteer and serve on different committees. I have a question for Charlie. Um, when these boards have terms that expire, usually what happens is they ask if the person wants to continue on and be reappointed, correct? Usually. Is there a way that these are also uh, posted somewhere on the town website so that people know that openings are coming up? so that someone who might have an interest in one of those positions might have a way of approaching the board? Not necessarily. I mean, I, I think usually what we've done is, you know, when we've had someone not want to continue. Right. Yeah, it's usually, if there's not, then it goes into the paper. Right, um, right. But we don't have a, um, a formal reappointment process. We, we don't interviews or things like that at any particular time of year. So uh, it's usually only when you know we have vacancies that we actually advertise or, or post. Okay, I was just wondering, I, I think it might be a good idea if we let people know that a new term is starting on the different boards. Well, I think just what Alan did tonight is to, you know, now begins, it, we're trying to get all of our appointments uh, aligned to the end of June. Uh, so this would be the time to solicit and seek, um, you know, volunteers for appointments to the various boards that we're appointing to. So, um, you know, I think Alan tried to reach out to people tonight. Maybe we, you know, remind people that, you know, we have, you know, vacancies on various boards and, uh, um, you know, make that announcement, you know, uh, every meeting or every other meeting or so. Uh, yeah, just so, just so the public yeah, knows that you know, there's a possibility people. coming up. And it, it sure. doesn't mean that, you know, the people who are serving on these boards won't continue on them. It's just there might be somebody else out there and they might have an interest in that particular board. Yeah, no, I, maybe we could do a, you know, just a general solicitation, you know, for, for volunteers and see you know, who, uh, you know, who volunteers. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second. To reappoint Mr. Atwood and Mr. Brown as members of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending 6 30 19. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Beautiful. All right. Um, 
I'll entertain a motion to approve an automatic amusement device license for Boston Cape Cod KOA. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seems like everything's in order. Yes. Yeah. I I wonder where my iPad was. I left it up here. So oh. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> to get away from here. I my iPad there. I said, no. What's wrong? Diane talked because she was new. We gave her two. <laughs> there you go. I should have two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, here we go. no discussion. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Entertain a motion to approve a common victualers license for the Cool Moose Cafe at 50 Center Street. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Um, I think they have one in Lakeville, right? Is the Cool Moose Cafe in Lakeville? Yes. They branch it on 18, yeah. Be interested to see how it goes. I haven't been to the one in Lakeville yet. But, um, all right. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Um, yes. Sure. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were you were here. All right. This is a pleasant location. Can you, uh, can you speak into the microphone, sir? This way the people at home can hear you, Rocky. We've been in Middleborough for over 70 years. And but now we're sure that we're going to stay here, so we're coming in with another business. <laughs> Beautiful. Glad to hear you, you. you plan on staying. All right. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We did. I'm just having a short term memory loss thing. So. <laughs> Take his iPad away. <laughs> what happened? Um, take a vote to authorize the sale of the following foreclosed properties 50 Navajo Shores and 122 Cedar Street. Um, so we're going to sell those. We have foreclosed on them. We have foreclosed. Okay. We are in possession of them. and um, Now we need to sell them. Oh. Okay. So moved. Second. Second, do we have any any uh, bidders out there? Or? Uh, we'll put them out to auction, and I'm sure we will. All right, well, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Review of the board's annual town report. Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKinnon. I uh, put together the town report. I'm sorry I was delinquent in getting it done so late. I should have had it done before this, but I put together the report for the board for our last year. We had sent it to Jackie. She forwarded it out to everybody. I don't think we got any responses. Other than some minor corrections on uh, grammar and some numbers. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. And it highlights, it, you know, the report can't really get into the detail of everything we did last year, but it highlights all of the major, I think, important issues. So I submit that to you for approval. 
Anybody have any comments or questions on it? Mr. Chair, I just said, would like to say I was very happy to see the emphasis that you put on the, our efforts in tourism in the Herring Run Festival. I'm going to say Herring Run Festival, count at home how many times tonight, okay? <laughs> That's all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a pretty good synopsis. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Good. All right. Uh, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. We're running a little behind, but at 7.30 we're going to have a uh, Middleborough Lakeville Herring Fishery Commission report. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Cavanaugh, I'm a fish warden in town, chairman of the Herring Fishery Commission. We have one other warden with us tonight, Tom Barron, who's currently on the injured reserve list, so I'll have him continue to, to sit down over there. Uh, congratulations, Diane, Alan. Thank good you, Dave. To, Good to see you, and good to see you back. <laughs> As you may know, the uh, the Masket River Herring Run, the Taunton, the Masket River is the largest herring run in New England. The, um, the herring come fr through Narragansett Bay, up the river into the Assawampsett Pond complex where they spawn. Last year we had an estimated 850,000 herring pass through the Wareham Street Ladder, which is a steady rise in numbers over the last several years. This resource is protected by seven volunteer, <coughs> excuse me, seven volunteer fish wardens and eight other volunteer observers and a couple of folks that just like to assist with counting herring but don't really want to be involved in the operation, so to speak, on the day-to-day -day assets. So as you mentioned, dedicated volunteers, I think we, we have a group of them. Our department is not tax supported in any way. There isn't one dollar of taxes that go to herring protection. It's all supported through the sale of herring permits over the last, uh, over past years when um, herring catching was allowed. Uh, the commission has three mandates from the board to administer and enforce herring catching regulations, which has not been done since the 2005 ban statewide on on herring catching. Number two, we maintain and improve herring habitat, which involves checking the river for obstruction to herring passage, uh, maintaining the fish ladders in operating condition, regulating the, the water through the ladders, uh, looking for ways to improve uh, habitat and passage, and assisting other boards with things such as uh, looking at reduction of street runoff that might degrade the river quality, uh, maintaining proper levels of water in the river, and coordinating uh, herring habitat issues with New Bedford and Taunton in the reservoirs, which is the spawning ground of the herring. Uh, we count herring to assist in the estimation of the population. We assist in various research projects that come along concerning herring and we're involved in stocking programs to help restore other herring runs that uh, have been depleted in the past. Our third mandate is public education, which involves uh, giving tours of the fish ladder and talking about uh, the herring migration to various youth <coughs> groups, uh, school groups. There's a couple of uh, scout groups, a couple of out-of-town school groups that have been interested in it. Uh, and we meet with the tourists who show up at Oliver Mill and the Thomas Memorial Park to provide information about the herring migration. Uh, we're involved in submitting press releases and giving interviews in the local media about uh, herring issues. And we participate in public events, such as the upcoming Herring Run Festival this weekend. We're going to have a, a table with some information there and we've been involved with things like uh, crazy days in the past and there were a couple of uh, environmental day type shows over at Ted Williams Camp in Lakeville 
that we've been involved with. Uh, over the past year, we've been involved in stocking with uh, Mass Marine Fisheries and the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management to restore some herring runs that have been lost in past years. We're involved with uh, an experimental video counting system over at the Wareham Street Herring Run uh, in connection with uh, Mass Marine Fisheries where they're uh, using our run to experiment with uh, some video counting uh, programs that they're trying to get going and trying to fine tune so that they can use them in other parts of the state. Uh, currently we're involved in, with a research project with uh, UMass to ascertain uh, spawning rates in a specific pond. Uh, they're going to stock a specific number of adult herring into Robbins Pond in East Bridgewater and from that specific known number of herring that's, that's being introduced there to be able to find how many herring fry actually hatch and migrate downstream. We have representatives on the, the Assawampsett Pond Committee. Uh, we work closely with the Park Department uh, concerning some mutual issues at Oliver Mill Park. In past years, we've been involved in restocking programs with, uh, with several other rivers around the state. And while I have the chance and while I have your ear, uh, we'd like to publicly thank the town manager and the police and the highway department uh, for assistance. Whenever we needed anything, whatever we needed, they were right there to help. Any questions? How does the, uh, the stocking program work? Well, we try and enter into a, a five-year program when any group is interested in uh, restoring a run. Uh, the first one we were involved with was the Concord River. Uh, we've been involved with the Town River with Bridgewater and West Bridgewater. And over the last few years with the Ten Mile River with, uh, and the Mill River with Mass Marine Fisheries. Uh, also the Ipswich River, which is a part of the Merrimack River watershed. Um, a group that's interested comes to us, uh, gives us a presentation as to where they want to stock, what their river system is like, making sure that there is free passage from the ocean up to uh, the spawning grounds, that any fish ladders they may have are in good working order or that their, their river is suitable for the passage of herring. Um, usually we inspect their, um, their river system and they come down usually about 2,000 fish per year um, loaded into a tanker truck and trucked up to the spawning ground where the adults are introduced into their new spawning ground and hopefully spawn up there. The adults will return to the ocean and the adults will come back here next year and the fry when they hatch will go out to the ocean and return to their um, new spawning ground and we try and do a five-year program because uh, the fry when they hatch they usually live out at sea for about three years before they make their first spawning run so with a five-year program we're still introducing a stock when they should be getting some returns so after the five-year program is up then they can look at it and see what kind of returns they're getting in their own runs that's pretty neat it's, uh, it's a fascinating uh, the thing to watch, too. <laughs> yeah. when, did, uh, when did the Middleborough Lakeville Herring Fisheries Commission stop? What, when did, what was your inception date? Well, there was a, a committee, a kind of an ad hoc committee that was started in the early to mid-1990s, and it evolved into a herring committee around 1996. And in 1999, we, uh, the board, the Middleborough Board and the Lakeville Board signed the, the formal operating bylaws. So it was 98, 99 that the commission came into existence in its present form. Now, uh, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to jump in. One question. Approximately 
you've talked about having fry. How many fry does one fish produce? Good right. question. That's one of the things that this UMass <laughs> research project w would like to, to determine. Um, an adult fish will lay 300, 400 eggs. How many of them actually hatch and develop into a fish themselves is a question. I mean, during, the, during the fall and winter when the fry come down the Namaskit River, I mean, there's, there's thousands and thousands of them, but how many of those can come from one individual fish, we don't know. Mr. Chair, um, I heard you had otters coming down too. Does that happen every year? I know you have them on film. That, that was exciting to me. I thought it was. We do. The one thing the video system picked up this year was a river otter swimming through the Wareham Street fish ladder. <coughs> and as a feather in, in the cap to Middleborough as a whole, the state wildlife people tell us to have river otters in a river is a sign of a very clean river. Oh. Okay. We've seen otters maybe 10, 12 years ago. Uh, there was a small family that was down near the Wareham Street Dam, but this otter that came through the ladder was the first one I've seen since that time. Great. We also have minks that have, that have come down and taken, uh, taken some fish, osprey. We've seen eagles in town and our friendly neighborhood herring gulls and blackback gulls are around. Great. Which is why the herring are important. They're the bottom of the food chain. Uh, just about everything else eats the herring. So when the herring population dropped, that was a concern that that would uh, have a ripple effect through the entire food chain. But luckily, at least in our river, the herring numbers uh, seem to be coming back into almost as high as they, they were in the recent high number history. Great. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the moratorium on, on catching herring? You can't catch a herring. You can't. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, in, in 2005, uh, the state put a moratorium for, for a couple of years before that, of 03, 04 time frame. The herring population crashed on the entire East Coast. We went from you know, 600, 700,000, almost a million one year, down to 300, 400,000 fish. And that happened along the entire East Coast. So most states put on a moratorium, including Massachusetts, that said you cannot harvest uh, be in possession or sell any river herring. Uh, the state put a three-year moratorium on, which they extended for another three years. Uh, concurrently, during that time, the Atlantic States Marine Fishery Commission put a moratorium on river herring catching on the entire East Coast. Now a state has to show that there will be a sustainable yield with a harvest before the Atlantic States Commission will allow a state to open up to herring fishing. And right now, I think Maine and New York are the only states that are open. Is that, would that be something you would support, opening up the, uh, the herring run to catching? We have actually petitioned the state marine fisheries to look into reopening uh, catching. I know us and I know Wareham has uh, petitioned. I don't know if any of the other towns, I, I haven't heard whether any other towns had, had asked for runs to be reopened, but most of the fish ladders, most of the herring runs are controlled by state marine fisheries. Uh, Middleborough is unique in that Middleborough and Lakeville actually own the Namaskit River herring run, so we kind of control our own destiny here, but we've always been uh, in step with the state on the moratorium. Uh, the state will have to prove that there is a sustainable return if fishing is open. Uh, I think we've got the numbers that would prove that. I'm not sure how solid the numbers would be in some of the other areas, but um, it's going to have to be a statewide uh, 
look that marine fisheries is going to have to petition the Atlantic States Commission and it could be to reopen the entire state or to reopen only specific runs pretty neat um, so there are actually three lattice and then a masket lat the, is all of the in, mill in the entire herring run from Narragansett Bay up the Taunton River up the Namaskit River into the Assawampsett Pond there are only three obstructions all three of them are in Middleborough we have Oliver Mill Park which has a fish ladder uh, the Wareham Street Dam which has a fish ladder and the Assawampsett Dam itself which has a fish ladder now the Assawampsett Dam spans between Middleborough and Lakeville the town line goes right down the middle of the dam but the fish ladder itself is on the the Middleborough, the Middleborough side, side yeah. <laughs> but in the entire Taunton River system those are the only three obstructions to Herring Passage. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyone else have any uh, questions? Well I just want to say thank you very much uh, once again this year I brought my kids down to Oliver Mill and uh, Thomas Memorial Park already and they thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the Herring Run and uh, I know like you said, it's just a group of volunteers, and uh, you guys really do go above and beyond all year round too. I see you guys down there all the time. So yeah, it's it. yeah, it's it's a year round uh, year round job. It's not just just during the herring season, which is the busiest time and the most visible time, but uh, we we seem to keep busy all year. No, nope, it's <laughs> it's rare that I'm on the river and I don't see one of you guys. <laughs> And if I could just, uh, for the audience out there, we, we welcome visitors uh, at Wareham Street, the Thomas Memorial Park, and at Oliver Mill. Um, we love to see people come down and look at the herring, ask questions, learn about the herring. We don't mind if the kids uh, dip in and pick one up gently and put it right back down, but uh, please stay out of the fish ladders and don't get exuberant with the herring. They don't like to be flying fish. <laughs> if, if you do pick one up, just pick it up gently and put it right back down <coughs> in the water. Mr. Chair, and you will be there this weekend too, right? We will be there yeah. this weekend. So you can come down and learn something about the fish? Absolutely, yep. we'll have a table there. Um, hopefully we'll have some video of the counting system, although we may need to get access to a uh, a computer and maybe some power supply to do that. Uh, it's up if the, uh, we have that. If the state folks mm -hmm. have, are able to provide us with the the video, but we'll we'll be there both at the park and we'll we'll have somebody manning the table. We'll have some handouts that discuss the the herring migration. Great. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Ron Burgess. Uh, because of the hard work that everybody on the Herring Commission has done, um, both in having years worth of records and working with the state for uh, transporting fish, you know, into other other areas, uh, Mike Bernardsky had gotten, he, he's the marine biologist with the uh, Southeast group here, and uh, he had uh, some people question him about some poten potential funding uh, out there in which there was no project existing right now, and he offered to work with the commission to come up with some things to uh, apply for it. Uh, it would go along with that, as Dave was saying, the, the uh, health of, of the Namaskat River, it would go along with trying to take uh, some of the particulate out of the water, uh, silt and so on, has a detrimental effect on the run. Uh, the fish don't like that in their gills. So um, we're going to be looking at some, some ideas maybe for some low cost improvements that would make a big difference for the river that wouldn't be a burden to the towns. So, but that's. That often comes because these guys are all doing such a hard job that um, you know, we've got a state employee who's willing to work with the town group to see what he can do to get us some, some uh, funding maybe. So. Yeah, you don't hear that too often. No, no, no it's, it's, it's a very good cooperation. You've got two towns plus the state and so on, so it's, it's really nice. So. But I, I did want to let you know because that's, again, a reward for everything that these guys have been doing. Yep. 
I didn't see didn't see Ron sneak in. Ron Burgess is also one of our fish wardens. <laughs> If there's anything we can do to help, if you need anything, please get in touch with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. you got it. All right. All right, Charlie, Tom manages report. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just a, a note uh, that um, Paul Millett from Environmental Partners and I went to uh, a meeting at the DEP this past week, uh, again, focusing on funding for the wastewater uh, treatment plan upgrade and uh, thanks to uh, Jack Ham, uh, one of our residents and who recently retired uh, from the DEP, we learned that uh, there may be more than just loan funding out there, there may be uh, grant funding as well. Uh, and and uh, it's in the category of environmental justice. We have a uh, census tract that fits that category. Uh, and um, it, there's nothing uh, particularly different that we have to do than we were already planning to do in terms of our design and, and work, only that we have to get it, have a, uh, a signed construction contract uh, by next April, and, and that was going to be our plan all along anyway. So um, we'll be pursuing that, uh, and uh, you know, potentially upwards of a million dollars in, in grant funding could be, we could be eligible for. So we're going to uh, work very hard at that and see if we can uh, qualify and, you know, Keep, bring, bring that cost down even further. Sounds great. That's excellent. Yeah, it really is. It's uh, welcome news to hear that there was uh, grant funding out there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Ham. Uh, correspondence. Uh, Mr. Knowlton, you want to start? Certainly do. Number five. Um, let me just get to it here. This is acting up on me now. Um, I, I see that the, uh, I can't get to it here. The Community Preservation uh, Committee is looking to um, hire a consultant and looking to spend some money doing that. And I just wanted to offer, I think I can save you the $12,000. Um, the Community Preservation Act money should go toward the police station preservation and renovation. Um, that's where that money should go for the next, as long as it takes, and to save ourselves a little bit of money. And that's all I have. Yes, Ms. Lopez. I appreciate the sentiment. Um, I understand what you're saying. But I just wanted to explain that um, what we're looking for is, and other towns have done this, is a consultant who would um, assist people, applicants, um, once we, it's a two-step process, and once we determine in the first step that someone is, or some group is eligible for funding, then there's a rather complicated application that we like to get as complete as possible um, to save everybody time and energy. And so the cons this consultant, um, for lack of a better title, would uh, assist those people who are filling out applications and make sure that they come up with all the information that the committee needs and then would if once a, a project is approved, would um, help to administer that project, would, uh, would actually do on-site inspections and make sure that the reports get in on time and that the project, uh, the funds get spent the way they're supposed to be spent and um, you know, that sort of thing. And would also assist applicants and assist the committee in, in uh, finding resources. We don't like to fund entire projects with CPA money. We like to think that CPA money is a tool uh, to, in part, help with the project, but also leverage new money. And so this consultant would help develop resources um, for applicants and for the uh, committee um, so that um, 
so that we could leverage uh, state, federal money, private funding, whatever. Mr. Chair, and Jane, maybe you could answer this. Isn't there a percentage of your CPC money that has to go towards administrative duties, and would well, this qualify not, in that? Yeah, it doesn't have to. But well, it's it supposed can. to be set yeah. aside. Yeah. Okay, and this would go towards it. Yeah, okay. and well, it would. It would actually the uh, most of the money for this would come would be added to the, the grant applications as an administrative piece of the grant application. Right. Which many of them include. And also, you're right about the leverage. There are many matching grants out there. So if mm -hmm. the CPC puts up a certain amount, it automatically makes us eligible for other money. Right. So this person would help identify <coughs> that those funding sources okay. so that we're spending as little of our taxpayer money and state match as possible. Right. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but it just seems a little odd that we have to spend money to tell us, have someone then tell us how to spend more money. And I would, I would like to see the CPA funds as much as possible under the formula be used for this very big project for the police station. Um, it's a historic preservation. That's the reason why we're doing it at that location. And I'd like to see as much money as possible, because it's matching from the state, be put toward that particular project. Well, the, the committee will be meeting Thursday night at the, uh, in the community building at the Housing Authority on Benton Street uh, at 7 o'clock. And that's one of the items on the agenda, is Good. an application from the police, building police station building committee for CPA money. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Mr. Nolton? No, that's it. All right. Ms. Stewart? I don't have anything to say. All right. <laughs> Mr. McKenna? Yes. Item number two. Several years <laughs> back, the Falcon no I'm going to get the name. Falconeri. Right. Yeah. Falconeri family brought to our attention the effort that they were trying to pursue to have a hill in Middleborough named after or named after the uh, Dominic Falconeri, who was passed away in 2002. He's a World War II veteran that survived Pearl Harbor, which is uh, admirable. And uh, this particular summit, uh, which is a 195-foot uh, tall uh, summit located in the town of Middleborough, 1.1 seven-tenths of a mile west of Wood Pond, Plymouth County, Mass, named for Dominic Falconeri, uh, life, lifetime area resident, business owner and survivor of an attack on Pearl Harbor during World War II. Uh, is the specific location on uh, USGS maps uh, of Clinton and uh, the U.S. Geodetic Survey in, and the uh, U.S. Board of Geographical Names has so mentioned and named this hill in his honor. And I think that's great. I'm pleased for the family, and I'm, I hope we can maybe send them a letter of I don't know, some type of notice that this happened. I'm sure they already probably got it, but maybe we could send them a, a little thank you note for bringing this and bringing this little piece of history to our town. We have a hill named after a World War II veteran in Middleborough. That's all I have. All right. Ms. Delphi? I do have a thing or two. Uh, number nine, which is close to my heart, we have a letter from Representative Oral here um, commending us on our um, efforts in tourism and our committee and telling us about her. She just got back from Japan. She had a trip there where she was talking about um, getting cranberries into the industry in Japan, and they were very interested in the South Coast area here in Massachusetts, so I'd like to acknowledge that. Um, also, number three, if you hold on while I get back there. This is a notice for um, Security Advisory Council, is that it? Yeah, number three. 
Yes, there we go. Okay, there's a, a meeting for incident training coming up that we're being invited to. Um, very, in, uh, if you've done, which we all have, all the training through the health department with FEMA, um, I think even Selectman McKinnon is a, a, an information, aren't you? Yes. Certified? Exactly. It's very important. ICS Training. 100. Right. It, it's has, every, all board of select yep. members have to take ICS 100. Exactly. And um, it's something that you, it's very interesting to learn. You hope you don't have to use it, but once you do learn it, you're, if you do need to, it's, it's really a very interesting um, and necessary tool. So I just wanted to point that out. And also the library has a position available for employment. So that would be number eight. Uh, a lot of mail today. I guess inquire at the library. My iPad's gone fuzzy. There we go. I believe it's for a part-time position at the library. There we go. Part-time library technician. Okay, that's all. I was going to talk about the cupboard, so. Uh, with that, I will entertain the motion to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation and contract negotiations, negotiations for non-union personnel and get executive assistance to the Board of Selectmen and to not return to open session. So moved. Second. Uh, poll vote. Poll vote. Mr. McKinnon? Yes. Yes. Mr. Alpe? Yes. Mr. Stewart, Mr. Aye. Milton, and Chair votes yes. So with that, we will move into executive session.